Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about a blinking jewel thief circuit. Uh, now this is the type of jewel thief that's supposed to be able to last years and years on one battery. Uh, but first off, i got to show you how to make it. Now this is a pretty simple circuit here. Uh, right now, this is just a standard jewel thief, but instead of a 1K resistor going into the base of the transistor, I have a 100, yeah, it's a 100K uh, resistor. Now, this resistor here, <clears throat> this is not uh, important to the operation of this thing. That is actually so that I can get a current measurement, uh, so I can see how much current is going in here. But all I have to do in order to make this thing blink is add one single capacitor across the resistor. All right, so that's a 100 microfarad capacitor, which is being put across a 100K resistor. And if you watch this for a while, it will eventually uh, blink. There it is. And this battery is extremely low. Uh, off of a full battery, it will blink uh, quite a bit quicker. I'll show you in a second, but this battery is at about 0.8 volts. So that's pretty much dead. If I stick in, this is a new Duracell, it's at like 1.6 volts. You'll see it will blink quite a bit quicker. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hook up the oscilloscope to this thing and We'll take a look and see how much current this is drawing. And we'll do a little bit of math and figure out how long, at least theoretically, this should last for. All right, so the scope probe, uh, this yellow channel, which is channel one, is hooked up across the LED, and then channel two is hooked up across that one ohm resistor right there. And it looks like the scope has found something to trigger on, so we'll go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so this is what we're getting with the scope here. The top line is the voltage of the LED, and then the bottom line there is the current, how many milliamps it's taking. You notice we're at 100 millivolts per division with the current, so we're actually drawing about 200 milliamps there, with a spike of about 200 milliamps. If I turn this on, it'll tell us. Yeah, about 244 milliamps actually is the. Uh, the amount that we're taking there out of the battery but I'll show you why that doesn't really matter here in a second on this other one you see that we're getting about a 7 volt spike going through the LED so it's actually quite a uh, a lot of current that's going into the LED as well presumably uh, considering that we're shoving 7 volts into it uh, of course just for a very brief period uh, that probably shows it on there somewhere but anyway the reason why it doesn't really matter that we're drawing 200 milliamps is because if I zoom out on this, I'll turn the menu off, you can see we're really not pulling at 200 milliamps very often at all. And this is down at uh, 50 milliseconds of division, there's 100, now we're just starting to see some more. Zoom out on this a ways, and let's see, the acquire menu is already on peak detect, so I'll just leave it there. And there we go. I'm going to put it about there. That's actually showing an RMS current draw of about 25 milliamps. Let's see here, we'll go into our measurement menu. There's no way it's actually pulling 25 milliamps, I don't think. Um, yeah, the average is only about 1 milliamp. There, 1 or 2. And it really depends on what time scale you're in, too. So, depending on the time scale, the amount of current you're drawing uh, varies quite a lot. So... How accurate this could possibly be, I don't know, but we're going to go with the lowest measurement that I see here because that is just a tiny little peak. And actually, it might be a better indication if I took this out of peak detect and set it to normal. <laughs> there you go. Now you can see 
You can see how the scope actually uh, struggles quite a bit in order to find those spikes. Whoops. Well, I do need that on. I need to get rid of that. But you'll see how the scope actually struggles to find the spikes in there without that peak detect mode turned on. Sorry for the shaky handheld camera work, but uh, you'll see it does struggle to find them. It's showing about 8 millivolts now. Uh, but really, we're going to go with that 500 microamps uh, number and we'll see how long this lasts. Or uh, we'll do some math on it and see how long it should last. So I've taken that one ohm resistor out just to show that you don't need it there. Uh, so that's the bare minimum in the circuit. I am actually kind of surprised that that thing takes such big current spikes, but then again, it is just one big spike every every so often, so uh, pretty hard to get a measurement on that. Uh, but anyway, we're just going to pretend that it actually is 500 microamps, or about half of a milliamp, and we'll see what we get with that. I think it's going to be like 100 days or something like that if I figure it that way, but I'm almost willing to bet. Whatever we find here, it's going to be quite a bit longer. So we're just going to pretend that this has about 1,500 milliamp hours worth of uh, capacity in it. It is a brand new battery. Uh, if we divide that by your uh, half of a milliamp, it lasts for about 3,000 hours, which is 125 days. So <laughs> I'm willing to bet that this thing lasts at least one year on this, uh, but I'll show you another one of these things if you don't really believe it. I'm gonna get, I will solder this together and uh, actually make it. I'm gonna change that LED to a blue one though, just to have it something different besides white. This one is basically the same circuit. This one blinks a lot quicker, if you can tell that. That one blinks a lot faster. It's got a red LED on it. And this one I didn't even start out with a completely full battery. Uh, but that's been stuck on my refrigerator since March of 2014. Which is over two years now. So, and this, like I said, I didn't start with a full battery. So, let's see where this battery's at now. I haven't checked it in a very long time. Uh, yeah, we're still at 1.3 volts on the battery, which is pretty reasonable. And this one, when I started this test, which was like, I don't know, 10 minutes ago, was at 1.6 volts. Yeah, it's still at 1.6 volts, so that hasn't changed. Uh, so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to solder everything on together. And I'm actually just going to uh, solder wire straight to the battery if I can. And I will also... Uh, just glue everything onto the battery and it should uh, make a fairly nice little blinking light. How useful it is, I'm not really sure. I guess if you wanted to draw attention to something and you wanted it to last a very long time, uh, it could be quite useful. Let's see here, I want to stick a blue LED in it just because I don't seem to use these blue LEDs for anything. And they're actually quite nice looking, quite a nice color. But anyway, let's put this blue LED in here just to test it out. Then I'm going to solder it all together and see what we can get. I think that's plugged in there the right way. Yep. You see, that's actually, in all of my eyes, it's a fairly nice color and it's. It's just a very short pulse. That's why it's uh, kind of hard to tell. I noticed on the uh, lower batteries it looked brighter. It's a very short high current pulse.
I figured I'd show you what I have here. Uh, it's fairly simple. I've just got uh, the capacitor and resistor over here. It's the same wiring. The transistors underneath the LED and then the toroids over here. Uh, so it seems like it'll work out pretty well. I'm going to cover this up with hot glue for uh, insulation as well as support. And then this will pretty much be done. Alright, so here is the finished product. As you can see, it's still blinking away. Uh, to the camera, that probably looks kind of white. To me, it looks uh, blue. But anyway, I've got the toroid stuck on there on the side. I've got a, another one of those magnets stuck onto the back so I can put this on the refrigerator. And everything's just glued onto the battery. Like I said, I have quite a bit of confidence in this thing uh, actually lasting for quite a while. Uh, anyway maybe a year or two. Like I said, the other one's already been blinking for two years and it's not anywhere near uh, being dead. So, today is June 20th, 2016. I will have to uh, remember that. And then, in a year I might do an update video on this or in six months or whatever. Uh, but currently, let me go ahead and get a record of what the battery voltage is. You notice I did just solder wires straight onto the uh, the battery, which probably isn't the best practice, but it does work just fine. If I can make a connection. 1.600 volts, so that is a completely full battery. Uh, another thing, just for reference, I don't know if I glued over it or not, but uh, this battery expires in 2023, of course currently it's 2016, I don't really expect it to last that long, but uh, anyway, probably a year or two off of this. That other one's been going for a year though, so this one might actually last longer because it is blinking uh, quite a lot slower, but that does look, looks like a camera flash almost every time that blinks. Yeah, yeah you can kind of see it on the... Yeah, you can definitely see it right there. It's pretty bright for a little LED like that, but this one's going to go up on the refrigerator with the other one, and uh, like I said, I'll do an update video on this eventually, and we'll see how long this thing can actually last.